Okay, let's talk about the autonomics of the orbit. So we talked about already the pterygopalatine, submandibular, and otic ganglia. Now let's talk about that ciliary ganglion and what its function is. You'd think its function is on the lacrimal gland, but we already understand that the lacrimal gland is supplied by the pterygopalatine ganglion. Uh, so uh, the lacrimal gland is not, a, is not a function of the ciliary ganglion. The ciliary ganglion is responsible for the uh, dilation of the eye and the accommodation of the eye. It's the parasympathetic components uh, that perform those functions. So the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers begin in the uh, accessory oculomotor nucleus, sometimes called the visceral oculomotor nucleus, also known as the Edinger-Westfall uh, nucleus. This nucleus is very close to, uh, it's nestled around within the oculomotor nucleus within the midbrain. And so these fibers uh, travel with the oculomotor root and join the oculomotor nerve as soon as it branches out. So these are components of the oculomotor uh, nerve. These nerves travel with cranial nerve 3 through the superior orbital fissure and uh, you know, diverge slightly from either the superior or inferior division of the oculomotor nerve to synapse on the ciliary ganglion behind the eye. So that is the extent of the preganglionic uh, neuron that forms this two-chain parasympathetic uh, system. Now the postganglionic neuron located, its cell body, its nucleus is within that ciliary ganglion. It will leave the ciliary ganglion and travel with components of uh, V1. And those components are the uh, ciliary, uh, ciliary nerves, the long and short ciliary nerves, which travel through the ciliary ganglion. So uh, too easy for them to just hitch a ride, travel along with them, pierce the sclera of the eye, and follow anteriorly past the aura serrata to innervate the muscles uh, that cause accommodation, which is, as you know, ciliaris muscle. Uh, so the other component, uh, parasympathetic function of the eye, is the, uh, is the sphincter pupillae muscle. So these fibers not only go to ciliaris muscle, but also go to sphincter pupillae muscle. Sphincter pupillae is going to constrict the iris so that less light is let into the eye. So when you're resting and relaxing, you don't need a lot of information to come into your eye. Like if you're sleeping, getting ready to go to bed at night, the lights are dim, it's dark, uh, you know, you, you're, you're comfortable in your cozy house and there's no saber-toothed tiger uh, coming to uh, chew your head off, then you can relax, your sphincter pupillae gets activated, you're letting less light in, and that stimulates the production of melatonin, which helps you go to sleep. Uh, so uh, ciliaris muscle also uh, contracted by parasympathetics, causing that radius to shorten, causing the, uh, the uh, decrease in, in size and the opening of the ciliaris muscle, uh, producing a larger, um, a larger lens, a more bulbous lens, which uh, gives you that uh, near vision. Uh, so that is the extent of the postganglionic fiber. Now let's talk about uh, the sympathetic components because if we have parasympathetics, we likely have sympathetics that contradict those actions, and in fact we do. Uh, so sympathetic innervation of the eye uh, travels from the, uh, the, sympathetic, the cervical sympathetic chain uh, hitches a ride with the internal carotid artery and forms a plexus over that artery. So sympathetics always travel with arteries, whereas the uh, parasympathetics always travel with GSA nerves. So here we see that will come off of the uh, internal carotid artery along with the ophthalmic artery traveling into the orbit and uh, traveling with some of these uh, cranial nerve components at this point to pierce the sclera of the eye and uh, innervate the dilator pupillae muscle. So sympathetically, we want our iris to enlarge so that more light can hit the retina of our eye. 
At the same time, we are raising our upper eyelid via the uh, levator, the superior tarsal portion of levator palpebrae superioris. Uh, and so that allows much more information. So when that saber-toothed tiger starts scratching at our door at night, we're like, oh my God, uh, and you know, all of, all of that. Uh, so those are the sympathetic components of the orbit. Thanks for watching.